Welcome everybody. My name's Sarah Long and I'm here today from Wealth at Work. You might have seen us. We're the ones with the jazzy pots outside. Um, please do stop by and take one home with you. So we're here today and I am going to move around a little bit if that's okay because I just don't like standing right behind um, the podium here. So we're talking about um, future um, key ingredients that are going to emerge um, to support our financial well-being and the financial well-being of the colleagues within our workplaces. Hopefully you're in the wrong right room. <laughs> if you're in the wrong room, please um, make your way very quietly to the where you need to be. But hopefully you've read the blurb so you know what we're going to be covering today. And it is really important. If anybody would like a copy of the research that I'll be referring to today, um, again, these are available um, at our stand um, and there's lots of masses of information in there um, to keep you very busy. Okay, so even just this morning in the news, um, they were talking about energy price cap. So cost of living hasn't gone away, as we all know. And just hands up in the room, how many of you have actually got a financial well-being programme in your workplace at the moment? OK, superb. Now, in the room, who's used chat GPT? Brilliant, brilliant. Who's enjoying it? Oh, great, great, even better. I'm loving it. So you're going to see a little bit of this in the session today. Um, but. It, in one way, I was also a little bit scared because we talk to people in the workplace about their money. And when I kind of went on to chat GPT, I was sort of putting in, what is the future of financial well-being? And I was a little bit scared in case financial education wasn't going to be on there. Clearly, it was always going to be on there, wasn't it? But, you know, number two, there's a lot of talk about technology. And absolutely, technology is really key which is why we're using things like this um, as a search engine. Um, but as you can see, number two, financial education is still there. This time last year, I went back through my slides, actually, and this was a picture. And I still think, and I don't know whether you would agree, but financial well-being does still seem to be that awkward piece of the puzzle. And I'm hoping that one day I can stand up here and it's all one nice happy circle, because it doesn't look that happy to me. <laughs> OK, so the great news is, for all of us in this room, that the research actually shows that 74% of the companies, so there were 200 companies, really, really good um, research population, um, representing 1.5 million employees, and it shows that 74% of those companies are looking to join up their wellbeing programmes. Quite a number of you who I've already been speaking to uh, this morning who've come to visit the stand have been talking about the fact that you've got mental health programmes, you've got mental health first aiders, we've got menopause programmes, but actually pulling it all together um, is one thing that is definitely going to be the future of financial wellbeing. One day, one day. OK, so I also went on to chat GPT because we wanted a little bit of a theme for the session today. What is a recipe? Now, that is actually my little boy. And I can assure you, these do make great cookies, even by an eight-year-old. Top tip, though, don't put the Smarties in with the mix. Put them on when you take them out. <laughs> anyway, um, so why is, why is a recipe important? Well, recipes are things that we talk about. We enjoy them, we talk to our friends about them, and that's kind of what we should be doing with our financial wellbeing programmes. What does a successful recipe look like? Well, really, there are lots of links here between what a successful financial wellbeing programme looks like, all of those key ingredients, but also taking a step back and looking at what ingredients perhaps are missing in our programmes. And of course, you know, finding ways to make things better. So, who remembers when, uh, we had, when we were in COVID and we couldn't get eggs? Yeah, do you remember that? So, in our house, we have a carbonara night, okay? One of my favourite recipes. But when eggs were hard to come by, <laughs> I had to kind of step up my carbonara night. And I'm just going to talk you through that. So, I kind of evolved it, adding a bit of chipotle in a carbonara, I know risky. Some of you are going, no way. <laughs> so 
So because eggs were short, I've turned a carbonara night into a carbonara pavlova night. <laughs> And as with any financial wellbeing program, we need to build that trust in our colleagues that they feel that we're an independent voice, perhaps. We're seeing more and more clients are actually you know, bringing people in to do those education programs rather than running them themselves, because there is that element of trust. And spicing it up a little bit, smoked salmon carbonara there, and the end result. But it makes the most of those key ingredients. And for any baking, and I do love baking, it is about the planning. You know, things like this don't happen overnight. Trust me, they happen in the early hours of the morning because I've got three kids. <laughs> but it has to be planned. It has to be thought through. You have to prepare. You also need to, you know, learn by your mistakes. Sometimes financial wellbeing programs may not work. Take that step back. Have a think how you could improve going forward. And one thing for sure, people talk about your financial well-being programs, just like people do tend to talk about my cakes. I do put them on Facebook. Um, and I do love making them. OK? So who was here when um, Davina was um, with us? Anybody? Brilliant. OK, so how many of you that did see Davina speak told your friends about that session? I know I did. It was very inspirational. And the, the reason why it was inspirational was because she talked from the heart you know, about her own situation. And what we're certainly seeing within financial well-being is that storytelling is becoming really important. How many of you would like your colleagues to be talking about your financial well-being programs in the workplace, hearing people saying, I gained this from being a part of the company that I work for. So I have got quite a few friends in the room and in the industry, and I um, did reach out to them to ask them what did they think were the three topics um, that were going to be the future of financial well-being. So Ketan, raise your hand. <laughs> so this is what Ketan felt were the three top top things that we were going to see for the future. And this linked really well to the research. So well done, Ketan, and I didn't even prompt you for it. If we look here, so can I afford to retire? Huge statistic here, growing by 159% in the research this year, that those companies were going to be looking at offering targeted support for over 55s. Also, Debbie O'Donovan... Debbie doesn't need an introduction. You all know who she is. <laughs> so top tips here. Ongoing rise in supporting financial literacy. And you've probably seen a lot of these stats this morning already. These are really, really important. But if I just go back to Ketan, we've also got Ketan's favourite recipe. Please do Google it. It's a great one. Oreo cheesecake. <laughs> so hopefully you will take the stats as well away. But that is one definite top tip. Um, so, Debbie spoke about the ongoing rise in supporting financial literacy, super important. And the research backed this up. Huge shift around financial coaching, growing from 12% last year up to 41%, which is 241% increase. Janet Cooper, who's also speaking this afternoon, these were her top tips. The share plans element was really key for me here, because you'll probably all be aware, as, we, as we've heard, of the lack of savings that people have had um, and how much of a shift in focus there's going to be around savings. Payroll savings, corporate ISAs. Who has any regular savings through payroll? Brilliant. A few hands. That's great. Good to see, really good to see, because that helps with that financial resilience if we can offer that within the workplace alongside your great pensions, share plans, and other savings vehicles. Martin is in the room. <laughs> so thank you, Martin. So these were Martin's top um, three tips. And number two, that links back to that savings element. And I really like that building for a rainy day um, pot because the research shows us you know, here, 34% of us 
have less than £1,000 in their savings. So what do we do if the car breaks down or the washing machine breaks down? How do we cater for that? Or how do we cater for our children who maybe need a brace? Anybody got an idea how much a brace is for children's teeth? Yeah, a few nods in the room. Nearly £3,000. And I had to, you know, really kind of think, where do you get that money from? So when my daughter needed her brace, you can't kind of say... So you've got to find it. So you need to have that resilience to be able to pay for things that come out of the, um, out of the blue. Data. This is really, really important. So with um, clients that we're working with and the programmes that we're running, it's using the data. And I'm sure that in the room, you will be using your providers that you're working in partnership with to help you with that data. You want to be able to phone up your provider and say, from those sessions and the follow-up calls that we've had, how many people were talking about mortgages? How many people raised debt on that guidance call? Because that data is so important to be able to help you shape those programmes and make sure that the content is relevant and is going to help people. In terms of the messages that we're putting across, I mentioned about energy price cap, that was in the news. Um, this morning, which was very um, timely. But, you know, bringing these sort of um, issues, if you like, to life so that it's meaningful for somebody, using real examples. Daily energy charges. Duplicating um, subscriptions. All of those things are things in our real lives that we can do something about. OK, financial literacy, we mentioned it, and it is really important. So who is happy to share what they see? And you guys who've been to my sessions before, you know I like these. It's just, <laughs> it's just fun. Two faces. Anybody see anything else? Tree. Tree, perfect. This isn't a test, by the way. <laughs> and there is a purpose of it. What do we see? Dog or cats? <laughs> Both, brilliant. Might take you a little while while your eyes adjust. Cats, yeah, and a lady, perfect. The purpose of showing this, um, and I'm really quite passionate about neuro linguistic programming, put my teeth in, um, and appealing to people's different learning styles. Some of you in the room will have liked the pictures that I've shared with you today. Some of you will go out and say, hmm. Not sure. I'll see it in the feedback that you give me. Um, some of you will like the fact that I've moved around, ask you to raise your hand. But think about that when you're pulling together the, your financial well-being strategies. You know, being really clear on what your objectives are, but thinking about communicating in different ways for different people. You know, are you providing copy in Braille, for example? Are you providing it in different languages? It's just making sure that we're using all the tools that we've got available. Technology's fantastic, videos are great. I love watching you know, a short video of, of something animated, brings it to life. But just remember, some people will, as I do, still like old school, oops, taking my Reba research and actually reading it on the train. <laughs> so that's just one thing that I think is also very important. So future of financial wellbeing. Yeah, don't reinvent the wheel. So many of us around the tables today will be able to share something that has worked really well. And like we were saying about the recipe, some people will share some things that maybe aren't working that well. But we can share those ideas and learn um, from each other. And I can't actually believe I've got four minutes left. I think that's the first time at Reba that I've actually finished. At the back, everybody's going, phew. <laughs> so... I am quite happy to take any questions. <laughs>